motor magnets are where the magnet business begins for me. As an electrical engineer, I was always very interested in motor design and fabrication. And very early on, when I first started supplying the magnets, I started finding out about people that were taking their CD-ROM drives out of a computer. When a CD-ROM would crash, they would take it apart to come all the way down to this little can that was the motor. And they would take out a ceramic ring magnet that was in there that was multipole magnetized. They would take it out because it was really weak, but it does fine for CD-ROMs and they would start replacing it with these super magnets. And one magnet that really took off was my little five millimeter by five millimeter by one millimeter thick magnet. It just happened to fit perfectly inside this can. Later we went to some where people would get a, a larger extruded can and I started making some of these magnets longer and I'm using this so you can just see how the magnets fit in. Well, after just a little while of participating in a bunch of the news groups and talking to the people about how you make these motors, I started asking the question, why don't you use curved magnets so that you can get a better fit on the inside radius so that you can close those air gaps down? Well, everybody thought that it would cost too much money. Working with the manufacturer, we were able to get these magnets made with this curvature at a very low cost, not much more than just getting rectangular magnets. And what happens is when you're dealing with the super magnets and you start getting closer and closer to the surface, you get a lot more power out of the magnet. When you have an air gap of just a sixteenth of an inch between an N50 magnet and the copper coils, you're going to lose a lot of energy because that field strength drops off so rapidly. And so when you can create a curved section and really reduce that so that you get down to an air gap that's a thousandth of an inch or two thousandths of an inch, you save a lot of your power that you're losing and it makes a much more efficient motor. So this led us to work in some other areas. We ended up getting into a wide range and you can see on the motor magnets page just how many different ones we have. There, a lot of them are just like this one, a basic rectangle magnet, 20 millimeters by four or five millimeters by one, one and a half, two millimeters thick, just a variety of different sizes depending on what someone needed. If you were using this magnet and making a large diameter circle, there's not much to gain by using a curved magnet because the radius is so large and the width of the magnet is so small that's not going to really show up. But when you start making one that has, like this one, a 20, 21, 22 millimeter diameter shell, it really makes a difference to have a magnet made to perfectly fit. This led us to create some other magnets. One is a set of magnets that I made in this three and a half inch OD, three inch ID, one inch long magnet. These are curved to fit. It takes about 18 of these to make a set. They're in 22 degree arc segments or 20 degree arc segments. And they all snap together and go all the way around. Each one is alternating its pole. Well, after working with this for a little bit, thinking about it from a motor standpoint, a lot of people started getting it to build their own alternators, to put on windmills. That became a big marketplace, building off of our motor technology with the brushless DC motors, and then now translating it over into alternators and making some incredibly powerful alternator coils using these types of magnets. I wanted to take this a little bit farther with my manufacturer and see what we could do. There's a type of magnetism, uh, magnetizing technique called stripe magnetizing. And this is the technique used in rubber magnets. If you get a rubber sheet magnet that sticks to the side of your car or something, this magnet has been magnetized so that every quarter of an inch or so, the poles change north to south, north to south. This makes it stick to the metal better. I said, well, what if we could do that with the neodymium? And so I had the magnet manufacturer make these magnets for me. And if you look at this, you'll see I've got N and S written. This one piece is a 60 degree arc segment. It takes six, to make a circle, and you can see three are making a half circle as I'm holding them up here. Well, since I could look at the magnets, and every time we did a 30 degree arc segment, you're losing some power in that interface between the magnets. So I asked the manufacturer to make this so that we had south on half of the magnet, north on the other half. This really improved the magnetic field strength about 10% and made for much better motors and it was much easier to assemble because you had a north and a south and all you had to do was flip the magnets. You didn't have to buy a set of north magnets and a set of south magnets like you do for most of our uh, motor magnets. 
I also had some people that looking at making some larger windmills and we made them some sets of these three and a half inch OD, three inch ID magnets that also were four inches long. Gave a lot more power for them to work with. It's also worked really well in some therapy applications just because it's long and curved and fits things like your arm or shoulder or thigh muscle or something like that in therapy applications. These magnets have been probably some of the most versatile used magnets that I have had. One of the most interesting applications was somebody contacted me and they wanted to take these, they wanted to find a really good way in a sumo wrestling uh, robot competition to make their robots stay on the ground. And they were looking at using magnets to help hold it to the ground. What we did was use this and mounted it in a plastic wheel and now as it rolled every single magnet face was holding to the ground on their steel plate floors that they fight on was doing an extremely good job and made it so it was almost impossible with four wheels like this to turn his over. Another guy used the exact same contact and made a little buggy that walks up the side of silos that held his little painting buggy that was able to clean the side and paint the sides of silos using these magnets in that application. Another guy uses these, puts two of them on the bottom frame of his motorcycle, and they help trigger traffic lights on when you're going through, pull up to an intersection at a traffic light, and it's got the copper coils in the ground. A lot of times motorcycles don't have enough metal mass to be able to trigger the traffic light. These magnets induce enough magnetic field, triggers the traffic light, just as if they pulled up in a big Fleetwood or uh, Fleetwood Cadillac or something. We've even had some needs to make some incredibly tiny magnets. These magnets are, are actually ring magnets. There are R0100D. They're one millimeter outside diameter, half millimeter inside diameter, one or a half, we got two of them, half millimeter thick or one millimeter thick, magnetized across the diameter. This makes for some extremely tiny two pole electric motors. So tiny that you can this is 50 of the magnets here, so you can get an idea of how tiny these little things are, and we can make some incredibly small electric motors using this. If you have any questions about motor magnets, or if you have anything else that you need, or have some special application, you can go onto the custom magnet site and see how you fill out the information, tell us what you want, and you can make some, we can get some special magnets made to fit your application. Hope this helps you understand our motor magnets just a little better. I'm <laughs> sorry.